Campus life for high schoolers in 2024 is wrought with various challenges, among them keeping student and faculty safe from an active shooter. As Chad Brummett found out for the series New Mexico Frontiers, a small group of students at Santa Fe's Capitol High are taking this challenge into their own hands. <laughs> I remember my freshman year, a kid actually took a gun to a school. He shot, he didn't shoot it, it was on campus and there was a lockdown. We couldn't go on campus at all. And that kind of put a little shock in me just thinking that right away my freshman year, I have an encounter with a gun on campus. It's an all too familiar drill. When the uh, shooting happened down by the library, I was at an of the school right across the street and we were on lockdown for like two hours, I think. Students in the 21st century confronted with the everyday threat of gun violence on campus. For me, I came from like Saudi Arabia. I studied there uh, like most of my life. And like, I didn't have to worry like, oh my God, um, somebody has a gun. You know, like I just have to study and like live my life as like a normal kid. But now, like, now I'm here in the U.S., I have to think about, like, oh, my God, there, people have guns and, like, you can actually die from school. And, like, it really, like, shocks me. Hayes, Edward, and Craig are like millions of other teens in America, working toward graduation, honing new skills and interests, and living under the specter of mass shootings at school. They, along with friends Raul and Jesse, are also unique in the fact that they are developing technology that they hope could one day save lives. Questions? They're part of the Computer Science Club at Capitol High School in Santa Fe, a group founded by teacher Barbara Tedarex. Uh, this girl just graduated from New Mexico Tech with a bachelor in uh, physics. For years, the group has been defying odds and competing in national competitions for technology, despite a lack of resources. A few years back, retired computer engineer David Ritter felt compelled to volunteer as a mentor for the group. And uh, you can ask these guys. They can get up and they can give you a half-hour lecture on how this works. Seeing real passion and curiosity within the walls of this Title I school. And they told me stories about, you know, going down to this end of town and having a kid wanting to make, like, a battery out of a potato. Okay, that's his project. And that he couldn't continue it because his mother couldn't afford to get any more potatoes. <laughs> Refusing to let students interest get lost due to financial constraints, Ritter set out to help fund the organization and mentor its students. So this new Scooby. Among the group's successes are Snoopy, a robot that measures air quality, Smokey, a second generation device created to detect smoke from wildfires, and now Scooby, which is designed to detect gunshots in schools. The reports I hear, they interview the people, and they, they hear a loud noise and they don't know what it is, and they don't know where it came from. And I said, that's a technological problem. We can solve that. Scooby employs four microphones that are able to gauge the distance of a gunshot based on their spatial relationship. A fifth mic acts as a trigger looking for the specific waveform of a gunshot. The students have tested and isolated that particular sound wave and coded the device to pick up on only that sound. As Ritter and his team of young scientists say, as few as two devices can work in concert to triangulate the location of the shot, immediately allowing administrators to know where on campus a potential threat is coming from. We're just slowly working our way through it, and they're seeing how an actual real project happens in the real world. You just you have an idea that you want to do something and you just start working the problem. In addition to the technical education and a slew of awards for Scooby and their other projects, the club is learning vital lessons that can be applied to any future career. Working in a team-based environment really just changes that and it allows you to really just in general connect with people and work better and more efficiently. This is just uh, amazing and they don't mind to come to school during summer, right, and, and still learn. I am incredibly proud of them and happy for them also. also right? Chad Brummett, KRQE News 13. Ritter was able to get the students on an internship program this summer, allowing them to earn a stipend while working on the device and its software.